fellow sim racers. So I'm here. It's been about two and a half weeks since the last video that I shot and uh, finally got the simulator ready to rock, at least at this phase of the build and figured that uh, I'd go over some of the changes and, and where I'm at with it and what I've decided to do and, you know, all the details, keep you guys informed. Not really sure where I want to take this. I'm not trying to be super professional like, uh, you know, like Inside Sim Racing and some of the other ones where they're very serious. Composing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, show you every product intricately. Now we've got the little tab with information. Uh, looks like there's a SIM card holder in here as well. So there's our SIM tool. Um, this is what we would use to put the SIM card in. I don't know if I need to be doing all that. Uh, you can watch those videos for something like that. I'm just trying to give you these ideas, show you kind of what I do, how I do it, tips, tricks. Uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. So let's take a look at the sim rig and uh, some of the modifications and the way that I had set it up. Okay, so here you got the full sim rig with the uh, DOF Reality simulator seat. Get kind of the whole picture of what's going on here, at least from the back. And again, this is just a temporary design. Come around to the other side here and see what we're working with. So that's kind of what we got going on there. So if you remember from the last video, we had the sim rig up against the wall in the corner, kind of similar to what we've done here, but I've actually angled it in the room you can kind of see that it's actually in the corner. It's got a uh, old piece of pond liner as a mat temporarily until the new mat comes. Actually, the mat has come. I just don't feel like moving the sim rig until the triple monitor stand arrives. And I will break the whole system down then and do everything at once. So that's why some things are not totally finalized, like the wires in the back. Everything will be covered eventually. Uh, but for now, until we remove the sim rig, it's all uh, just temporary. So let's go over some of the items that we kept. I've still got the Fanatic version 2 Club Sport wheelbase. Simple uh, number pad stuck to it. And that's really for the Euro Truck Simulator. You need a number pad to do some things. So I decided that a number pad was mandatory because I have this small uh, keyboard here that's wired with lights and stuff, but there isn't a number pad. So I had to come up with a, another solution and rather than having some gigantic keyboard with the number pad and everything. Kind of the shifter. I feel like this is probably one of the best shifters on the market, the Fanatic Club Sport. It's both sequential and, uh, you know, seven speed H, H pattern shifter. It's just amazing. Have the Fanatic emergency brake, which is going to be replaced by a Rimco Tech uh, hydraulic cam brake in the near future. It's on order. It's got the, uh, the little trackball mount sitting in there. It's actually very handy and in like a great spot. We come over here, I got a flashlight so I can kind of show you what's going on back here. We got the center channel and the subwoofer. Not super interesting, but that's back there. And then, of course, we got our speakers here mounted right to the TV stand. And we kept this TV stand temporarily. This was the one that came with the GT Omega. That's the one that came with it. It's one I've been using for a while. It's got a 48, I guess, inch. I can't remember the exact number, but it's a... Uh, Samsung curved television. It's not a monitor. It's just a television. Uh, seems to work really well. It's a little big for my taste, but then again, you never know until you buy it and have it and realize that maybe it's not what you wanted. So we're running those V3, those V3 uh, pedals, and I'm also running 
the dampener on both the brake and the gas pedal, as well as, I don't know if you can see that there's a uh, Dayton pucked tactile transducer mounted to the top of it as well. And while we're on that subject, if you look over here on the side of the shifter, you will see another one of those tactical transducers. And I got my little light here for, you know, my drinks. You see the little drink caddy I got mounted. So that way I can see I do play mostly in the dark. As far as rear speakers go, we got some Boston Acoustic, a little excess, only weigh a pound. You see them, they're just mounted right to the seat there. So you get that nice sound from the rear of the vehicle. This is the, uh, this is the cord for the VR it comes through. So that way it doesn't get tangled up over my head and I don't have to worry about it binding up inside of the, uh, the motion simulator. And you can see I just have it hung back here. I just got a little, uh, little piece of Velcro that holds it on here. And honestly, it works just fine. I do cover the, you know, I cover the screen so that way dust and things stay off of it. And we do use it in the room as well. So there are times where we just have to disconnect it totally. And that's why I've gone ahead and made it simple to where uh, the cord is actually just hung on with, you know, ties. So that way the cord can come off and the kids can play the other VR games that aren't necessarily set up for the uh, motion simulator. Next up, we take a look at my computer. It's the same computer. It's an MSI with a uh, NVIDIA GTX 1080 and a bunch of other crazy computer stuff that I don't really know. I just know it's a badass computer and that's pretty much what I need for it to do. We have the same setup that we had before. I got the Xbox one uh, S down there at the bottom, which honestly hasn't been used a lot. Got an extra Club Sport steering wheel down there. And then we have the Onkyo receiver that we were using before, as well as the OSD amplifier for the tra tactile transducers. And we have the butt kicker pearl thumper for, you know, shaking the whole rig. A little USB powered switch up here. Now let's take a look at the butt kicker. And the way that I had to mount it on the rig here. So I wasn't overly happy with it. You can see I have, I don't know if you can see it, but I have these zip ties. And that's because the thing kept wanting to go over and I can't tighten it anymore because it broke. This, uh, this just turns and nothing actually happens. So I'm gonna need to replace this bolt with an actual bolt. But until then it's working been using it for two weeks and it's fine it's not moving around at all it just seems to want to just seems to want to go that way so the zip ties actually just prevent it from doing that all right next up we'll talk about those two tactile transducers we talked about last time so here's one mounted right underneath of the seat you can see it and then there's the little tactile guy but then underneath you can see that we have the other one mounted to the bottom of the pedal plate so those tactile transducers, they really do a fantastic job at really shaking the whole rig at all frequencies. And then the big butt kicker really comes in at the end with a big thump. And then of course there's the subwoofer, which adds some uh, bass to it as well. For uh, the Onkyo system, we finally got it to a 7.2 channel. So obviously one channel is the subwoofer down there. Channel number two, is the uh, bass shaker and then the uh, seven channel surround we didn't have these side speakers before so now we actually have surround sound completely because we have it coming in on the side as well as coming in on the back and last but not least we're going to talk about the dof reality three points of motion p3 simulator now they make two, they make the H3 and the P3. Now the H3, they say, is basically the exact same thing, just the, uh, the motors aren't quite as powerful and not quite as fast. And we're talking about not quite, very little. And if you're on a budget, I'd highly recommend uh, the H3. Now I have the P3, I spent the extra six or 700 bucks, but I don't think it would be necessary for the average user 
But again, I just kind of wanted to make sure I went all out and, and uh, I just spent the extra. And if you have the extra, I definitely recommend spending it. But let's take a look at it. So you see that the whole rig is just built basically on a frame. The whole thing just kind of pivots on this pivot in there. You can see it. I'm going to try to get in there for you. Okay, so it just pivots on that. And then this motor will rock them back and forth. And this back motor is for the sway feature, so that way for traction loss. And you do have to make sure that this whole rig is balanced and level. And I'm pretty sure that's why I'm getting the wheels are starting to deteriorate in this one corner. You can see the wheel there starting to get shredded. It's okay, they send a few extras. I'm actually going to probably machine a few out of brass, just like uh, Johnny Tech Gear did. I think that's an excellent option. But let me tell you, this thing is amazing. If you are in the market for any kind of any kind of sim rig, I mean, I highly suggest it. It's very quiet, and the angles of motion are incredible. It's very fast and responsive, and it has completely changed the way that I play games. I mean, I just... It's almost to the point where if game's not motion, I basically don't want to play it. And that's just how amazing that this system is. So that is the control box for it, by the way. Pretty simple. Not a real complex procedure. It took me about, you know, maybe eight hours to put it all together. And that's with some breaks and drinking some beer and, you know, playing around. And then, of course, adding all the extras, the wiring and the, you know, at putting it all together. It's been a few days process, you know, if not more than that, but obviously very enjoyable. So I'm going to finish this out with a little Project Cars 2, just so you guys can get an idea of how it works. And I'm going to record it with sound on and sound off. That way you can really get an idea of just how quiet this thing is if you were to play with headphones. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to play a little Project Cars 2. It's probably my favorite game so far, other than maybe Euro Truck Simulator 2, that I found with uh, the motion simulation. And you can play it triple screen or with VR or single screen. I'm just going to do it standard here, uh, regular single screen. Uh, just get a little feel for how quiet it is and uh, you know how much movement it can truly have. And now I only have most of the settings around 50%. They can go up. But it gets hard to actually drive, so uh, it almost becomes unrealistic. So I think I have it about where I like it. Obviously, you can tweak it yourself, checking one setting at a time to see what they really do and how they affect the game, and then deciding for yourself where you like them at. So let's hop over and uh, check out Project Cars 2. All right, so it's worth noting that for a little bit I'm going to run with no sound. You can just hear it, see it. If you can hear a fan running, that is the, uh, the motion simulator's control box. It is a little loud, but once you start playing, you totally don't hear it anymore, especially with headphones or music. Uh, so you may hear a little bit of that, you may hear a little bit of noise, but again, very quiet. So here we go. Let's give it a go. Really weird driving it without sound. You can obviously see it's very quiet. It makes almost no noise. Maybe a little hissing noise here and there. Maybe a little rattling noise when it really jumps around. But for the most part, there's really no noise to it. And you can clearly see that, you know, here I'll try to swing the car out. You can see it swings it out a little bit. Oops. So let's play a little bit so you can get a feel for where we're at. A little fishtail on the outside, and you can see it swings it right around. 
a little bump when I hit the wall there. It really gives you that feeling that you're moving. You can see that if I rotate this around, I'm getting the movement. And the traction loss is only when you literally lose traction. So it doesn't do that around the corner, only if you're going to lose traction. It just moves the seat, and then when traction loss happens, that's when that slide, slide comes out, that yaw feature. Whoa! Oh. All right, let's turn it up and get a real effect. guys I hope you had fun along the way uh, I know I had fun showing you my current build obviously work in progress I'm not there yet I uh, still have some things that I'm trying to take care of but I think I'm in the right direction and uh, hopefully you'll join me for no more videos did I just say no more videos hopefully you will join me for more videos as I progress in the build of the sim rig and maybe do some streaming some racing some reviews and uh let's see where this goes all right see you next time